We are reaching the end of a year that has been one of the most thrilling years in decades for ABBA, together with last year in fact, when they released their new album. So let's take a look back at some of our top moments of ABBA from this year. Hey, so this list will not be a top list from good to best, but we will go through all of those glorious events in chronological order and in the end it's up to you to decide for a top list or simply choose your highlights. So number one, Björn's brand new recording, Hey Gran Old Man, it was recorded in tribute to Thomas Ledeen's 70th birthday and accompanied by a very entertaining music video. Number two, one of ABBA's new songs was already performed on TV across Europe. Ode to Freedom was adapted for choir arrangements on Swedish TV in March and on German TV in May, which even got a special introduction from Björn and Benny. We're both very happy and uh, honored that you've chosen our song Ode to Freedom for this occasion. Number three, ABBA the movie was screened in US cinemas in May. Perhaps some of you in the States attended one of these screenings and had some fun. I was fortunate to have seen the film in cinemas twice in my life and it's so much joy to watch ABBA's movie with an audience in a dark room. Number four, Benny collaborated with James Wrighton on a modern electronic synth track called Empty Rooms. He provided memorable synth lines for this melancholic, atmospheric tune. We recently talked about this song and it has become a big favorite for some of you discovering it or even rediscovering it. Number five, the 26th of May, 2022. Need I say more? Our work for over five years on a futuristic project and this was to be the day that it would all be revealed to the world, to us. Our voyage opened in London. Many of us were lucky to actually have been there and I was invited too. Hey, hey, so. And this was not only the big world premiere of the show, this was finally, finally the moment and opportunity for all four members of ABBA to get together again in public for an actual ABBA event for the first time in 40 years. We could easily compile a top 10 list with top moments from this day only. We had ABBA arriving together in a London cab, something I would never have expected them to do. This was so elegant so much class and love. We had ABBA showing themselves together at the red carpet, giving interviews together, first all four of them, then the classic lineup of Frida Björn and Benny Agnetta. We saw ABBA gathering together with fans. We had a bumblebee trying to attack Benny, or maybe it simply wanted to be a part of that photograph. After all, they have written a song about that bumblebee. We were watching ABBA's show with ABBA in the audience, and we witnessed ABBA finally bowing out to the audience. That eventful night wouldn't stop here and some lucky fans got to see them backstage behind the scenes with Agneta and Frida being in the best of moods. And with that world premiere we also got a bunch of new reunion photos as part of the show program photographs that have been taken of ABBA during this creative process. Number six, Agneta attending the Swedish premiere for Elvis. Our excitement got stirred up just a few weeks after the voyage opening, when Agneta was seen in public again. As of now, this also happens to be the last time that we have seen Agneta. How sad. <laughs> Number seven, the premiere of Björn's new project, Pippi at the Circus a circus musical based on Astrid Lindgren's Pippi Longstocking, as well as the release of its soundtrack with music by Björn and Benny on digital platforms. The show will return to the circus next summer. Number 8. Frida's public appearances in September. We saw her on a photograph taken in Spain and later that month she was the first ABBA member to publicly visit ABBA Voyage again. This was quickly followed by visits of Benny and then Björn in October. Number 9. The Q&A with Björn and Benny. This was filmed in March and released in October. Björn and Benny talk to Swedish journalist Jan Kratval for 45 minutes and they talk very openly and relaxed about voyage, about the good old times and praising Agneta and Frida more than once, even giving them 90% credit for being responsible for the ABBA sound. I'd say that 
Frida Nagneta is 90% of the ABBA sound. That's what I think. You take the voices out, let someone else sing. Uh, it's not the same thing. Apart from the Q&A with Björn and Benny, we got no official ABBA documentaries, but there has been a one-hour documentary on UK's Channel 5 called ABBA The Missing 40 Years, broadcast in May, and a half-hour program on the History and Culture Channel in October called Why We All Love ABBA, which even has a participation of our very own Björn Wales from Sweden. And number 10, the many releases we got this year. ABBA Gold was reissued on vinyl and cassette tape for its 30th anniversary, Happy New Year got a limited gold vinyl single release, and ABBA in Concert was finally released in high definition, at least its main performances on ABBA's YouTube channel. We talked about the new restoration on our channel here. There have also been some releases related to Agneta's solo work. In January, a Peter Cetera CD box set contained the duet I Wasn't the One Who Said Goodbye in three versions, two of them digitally available for the very first time, the extended remix and the Spanish version. And just a few weeks ago, Agneta's one and only feature film as a lead actress was finally released in Sweden on DVD and even on high-definition Blu-ray disc. Unfortunately, it has no English subtitles, but you can order it from the official international ABBA fan club. We also got new book releases, including Frida Beyond ABBA, which has all the details on her musical output as a solo artist, as well as a new book from Karl Magnus Palm, ABBA at 50. Unfortunately, we also received sad news of artists who passed away. On this channel, we honor the legacy of Olivia Newton-John, and recently the Hapstars lead singer Svenne Hedlund passed away, and we celebrate our memories of him and his music with Benny and the band. Earlier this year, on our channel, we celebrated 50 years of ABBA's very first single, People Need Love, and traced the story back, including the making of Frida's stunning debut album from 1971. We also celebrated 40 years of The Day Before You Came, and of ABBA's final TV appearance. In the summer, we went on our very own journey together through Stockholm and to some ABBA locations. We visited their old houses and so much more. I enjoyed going there with you. And finally, only recently, some mysterious ABBA bears went viral and made headlines. No one knows what to think about that. Let me take this opportunity to say that for me, this is a blessing, being able to talk about all of this make videos out of it, and to see that some of you take their time to watch it. So thank you to all of you, and also to those who subscribe to my channel. What a year this has been for all of us ABBA fans. I think we are the most fortunate group of fans. We now have so many places to pilgrimage to. We have our museum in Stockholm. We have a magical concert residency in London, with more arenas popping up around the world in the future. And we have the reunion we've always dreamed about. A new album, new photographs, new interviews. We are a lucky bunch of fans. Now it's up to you to make that top list, or maybe you have some other highlights too. Let me know in the comments below what your highlights are. I also created a playlist for you with our best videos from 2022, so you can revisit some of them or even watch it for the first time. Alright, until then, hello!